Welcome to another Between the Lanes how-to video. In this video we're going to be talking about motor brushes, springs, uh, changing motor brushes, installing them, seating them, radiusing the brushes, just all, all kinds of other little tips and not so much tricks but tips and tricks um, on how easy it is to change brushes and springs on slot car motors. Um, I'm Ron Hirschman and uh, we'll get started. So popular motors today uh, 16D, Super 16D, sealed, unsealed and then Pro Slot FK motors which are also sealed which is what this band is. This would be an unsealed 16D motor. So on the sealed motors one of the first things we're going to do even before we start working on it is we're going, to, we're going to coat this seal with clear fingernail polish. And what that does is it keeps the seal from wanting to flake away from the motor after you've you know had your hands on it, fingertips on it, and all that stuff. So uh, you just get you some uh, clear fingernail polish, maybe from mom, mom or girlfriend, wife, uh, drugstore, Walmart. And what we do is we just put this on like so and we give the give the seal a pretty good liberal coating on all four sides and again when this dries and we, and we have to leave this dry before we go any further on it uh, you gotta make sure like I said it's thoroughly dry because this will actually soften the seal while it's curing and becoming hard. So I said we went around all four sides and uh, what we'll do is we're gonna we're just gonna leave this sit, we're gonna put it off the side and we're gonna let it dry while we do some other stuff. So take your motor out of the package. Like I said if it's sealed you want to coat that seal before you start messing around with the motor. And, and then again, if you have a motor that doesn't have a seal, that you can change the brushes and springs. Uh, first thing you're going to notice, I don't know how close we'll get here, but there's these little tabs here that are bent over to keep the spring from coming off. So you you have to sometimes bend them back out of the way a little bit. And you want to go real soft and easy when you bend those back because you can break those tabs off real easy if you're not careful. Take the spring off, and we'll knock the brush out. We'll come over and do the other side. Knock the brush out. So there we are with no brushes and springs. Okay, now what you want to look for is you want to make sure the brush hoods are as lined. Again, we'll get you a good view best you can. Now, I, it's hard to tell through the camera how close these are so I gotta kinda move it. And I can see that this side is up a little higher. Now on a sealed motor uh, because you can't take the end bell off four screws hold the end bell off. Um, sealed motors you can't remove the screws because you can't take seal off to remove the end bell to align it with a brush hood tool. And on this type of motor you could remove the screws, pop the end bell off, and align the brush hoods and you need an alignment tool to do that but we're basically in this video going to show you how to deal with the sealed motors and, and getting the hoods aligned as best as you can so basically what we do is we stick the alignment tool on one side and and I will eyeball kind of tweak it but that's not the side that was off so um, gotta kind of bend you can loosen the screws and move it around if you want I normally don't do that I just uh, just tweak on them until I get them to where I think, by my eyesight, they look pretty aligned. And yes, there are some tools out there you can buy that will aid you in this, but I've never bought one, never used one. I've, for years, I've run the sealed motors after the line them. I just use my tool and my eyeballs. And I think I got that pretty close. And you can't, it's hard to really see it in 
in this video how they are but I'll show you a motor later that I've done after I've raced it and everything so brushes and springs are out so the most the two most popular brushes to use as replacement besides the stock motor brushes are either the the pro slot PS group 7 brushes are the Coford Bigfoot brushes and for this video we're going to use the pro slots and I'm going to knock a pair well we're going to get a pair out of here and we'll put these off to the side now a motor brush and we're going to kind of zoom the camera in here in a second and show you um, Okay, so the motor brush, now the package looks like that. You can kind of see the two flats are the tips of the brushes, and it's got a very rough finish. And the reason for that rough finish is because the motor brushes are a powder that's pressed into a die and they come out in the shape of a brush after they've been pressed into the die and then they go through an oven uh, for a set period of hours at a set set certain temperature where basically you form a crust around the outside of the brush and that's what keeps the brush together and from falling apart and that's what we call centering um, oil lights are made the same way um, any type of powdered type products are made that way to keep them together. So on the face of this brush, we have what we call a crust. It's very hard, and you want to you want to remove that crust before you uh, run the motor brushes in the motor. So you, you take a tool. This is called a turtle, and also known as a brush radius tool. There's there's various uh, different kinds of brush radius tools out there. I've used this turtle for probably the last 20 years and um, it's uh, I've radius tens of thousands of motor brushes on it over the years and in a turtle basically you have two holes one is for vertical brushes which would be this side and one's horizontal. I would say probably 80 percent of the motors 80 to 90 percent of the motors out there um, especially 16D type and C can type and the ProSlot FK type, they are horizontal brushes where Group 7 motors have hor uh, vertical brushes where the brush is, is turned. This would be what we call horizontal and then it would be turned 90 degrees to become vertical. So you put the brush in, and again this is horizontal so we're on the horizontal side and on the bottom of this you've got like a diamond tool and there's two sizes uh, of radius. We've got like 200 and 180. Um, sealed 16D commutators uh, and motors and the ProSot FKs. All your 16D motors, all of your uh, ProSot FK motors, they all have the smaller like 170 diameter commutator. So you would want to radius them on the 180 side. C-CAN motors when the, when, the, when the arms are new, the commutators are anywhere from 200 to 205 diameter. So you would want to radius them on the 200 side. But if you have a 180 tool and that's all you have, you can use it on both. It's just going to take a little longer to seat the motor brushes in. Say if you radius them at 180 and your comm's 200, your, commu your brush will seat into that commutator diameter. It will just take longer to do it. So... Don't panic if you don't have the right size radius tool. So, if you don't have a radius tool, I'm going to show you what you can do here in a minute too. So, you put it in the radius tool, and basically you want to, I just put a little light pressure on top of the, the brush, and I roll this back, and I always use basically an old header card as, as my paper to do this. And as you see, as I do this, it's grinding the brush off. Now, we're going to take this brush out 
and I'm, I'm going to show you again close up. what this brush looks like after you see it's kind of rough but it's knocked all the crust off the tips the flat tips are gone you kind of got sharp tips and like I said that that surface looks really rough compared to an unradiused brush we we'll see you got your flat tips but on this other brush that we've already radiused, it's ready to put in the motor and run in because that hard crust is off of there. So I'm going to take the second brush, put it in the tool. And Again, we've knocked the crust off and, of course, the tips. Now, in the, in the FK motors, you have, well, let's zoom this back. You've got a shorter distance here from, from the brush to the commutator compared to a 16D motor, okay? So, what we do on the brushes for 16Ds, we're just going to throw them off the side because I've showed you what I want to show, and we're going to get another new pair of brushes. And we're going to, because I've done this so many times, now you can measure, you can measure this with a set of uh, dial calipers if you want, but I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've knocked the crust off and the flat tips as you can see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and again. Crust and flats are gone. Okay, so that's that's a full length brush. That was that's what you'd use in 16D, Super 16D, C can motors. Um, any what I would call long long brush uh, motor. Okay, like I said, the ProSol FKs those those brush hoods are they're in closer to the commutator, so the brush itself needs to be a shorter length. So that's using a radius tool. Now, if you don't have a radius tool, you can make what I call a poor man's radius tool. What I have here is I've got a 16D motor, um, and, and this is a motor that uh, I'd never race. It's just a 16D motor. You know, you, you buy another 16D motor for, uh, you know, 16, 17 bucks, and you can take it apart through the commutator if you want. And then um, on, the, on this one, I put some brass hoods on it and aligned it real well to make sure when I, when I use this to do for, for this demonstration, and I've used this before to break in brushes uh, this way too. So you just take this, you want to put your brushes in, and again, these have not been radiused, okay? These are, this is a stock out-of-the-package brush. We put it in there. We put a spring on, we take the other brush, and then we put it in. We hook our motor up to our power supply, and we put the motor down in the water. Now, turn the power supply on. And I'm going to make a nice wet mess here, but
So you just leave that run, and I'm running at about six volts. And pretty soon my my clear water is not going to be so clear. And when I get to that point, I'll shut this off. This can take you know anywhere from one to two minutes. Okay. As you can see, my water is no longer clear. Nice muddy looking color. Okay. Now. We will pull a brush out. And as you can see, it has a radius. Well, we're going to have to zoom this in. Bear with me. So, we have a radius, nice radius, and if we turn this this way, you can see it looks just almost like the brush we radiused in the radius tool, okay? So, whoa, where are we at? There we are. Okay, so that's radiused, but of course has a rough front edge on it. And the other brush, let's do this. The other brush. Well, get the water drop off there. And you can see it has a nice radius too. So, that's a way that you can radius your motor brushes without having a radius tool. Now, before I go any further, you just seen me water dip a motor and I never well, I shouldn't say I never I have in the past water dip motor brushes but I do not do that as a practice and I do not suggest it I suggest that you radius your brushes outside the motor whether you do it dry or wet and then you put them into the motor that you've taken the brushes out of, stock brushes. You insert the new brushes, or the, the brushes you've radiused, okay? And you put these in, it's very simple. They slide right in. And for this motor, we're going to put the Champion Red Springs on it. And you put your other brush in. You put your spring on. Now you're ready to go on the power supply. But before we do that, I want to show you... This is a spring that's put on correctly. The long leg is against the end bell, and the short leg goes on to the brush spring. Okay, so sometimes I will see motors 
where people put the brush springs on wrong. And I don't think I don't I don't think people realize that there's a, a wrong way and a right way of putting the springs on. But if you put the springs on backwards, they look like this. And you can see how the long leg now runs down at an angle over top of the short spring, which it's hitting, which can interfere with the spring tension of that, that brush in that brush spring. So that brush spring is on upside down or, in my opinion, wrong. So let's take that off. We'll put the right spring on. Because on these motors, double overhead motors, and that's what this is. This is double overhead springs. Both springs are at the top of the motor. There's a left spring and a right spring. So we've got the right spring on there, laced out against the motor, not interfering with the short spring, not binding up the coil wrapped around. So that is the correct way of having the springs on. Any other way is backwards or upside down and again not correct. So brushes are in the motor and so now we're going we're going to put on the power supply and we're going to run it. So we're going to put a little drop of oil on just a little 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 tiny drop there on the end bell bushing because you don't want to over oil that it'll suck in the oil and get all over the commutator and ruin the motor performance. Drop on the outside on the can oil light and I always put a drop on the inside between the the spacer and the bushing. Then On most of your motors are what we're, we call crosswire, 16D, Super 16s, most of your C-cans. The negative or black lead off your power supply goes to the back side of the motor, the axle side. The positive goes on the front side of the motor, which would face the front of the car. So we have that on. And you can hear the power supply. And we're going to run this at about 5 volts. What we want to look for is we just don't want to see any excessive arcing or sparking between the brushes and the commutator. If you see excessive brushes and sparks, then you want to lower your voltage. But usually 16, 16Ds and up. Um, you can you can run anywhere from four to five volts. Usually it takes about an hour to run them in and to make sure the brushes are fully seated. And I'm going to show you stuff on that here, what to look for. But that's all there is to doing your motor brushes and then running your motor in. So we're going to leave this run off to the side. And you're going to hear it run. We're going to let it run. And the reason I like dry break in. As, as I can hear the motor running. If you break the brushes in water, you can't always hear the motor because it's in, in there running, gurgling. You can't tell anything about amp draw. You can't tell anything about arcing or sparking. So with a dry break in, you're going to run that motor for about an hour. You're probably going to have to oil it, re-oil at least once, maybe twice over the period of an hour. But at the same time, if you have a bad bushing or a bad bearing, it's going to make a lot of noise and chatter. And you'll know that your motor has a problem before you get it on the track. So I, I just always feel it's important to just run the dry brake in. And that way you can hear the motor. You can oil it when it needs oil. And um, you can feel it every five or ten minutes and see how hot it is. If a motor gets extremely hot on the power supply you need to stop because there's probably something wrong with the motor. Um, when I say extremely hot, it's so hot that you can't touch it. Motors will get warm. Um, basically it's kind of like a five second. Put it in your hand, count to five. If you can hold it, it's probably normal. 
if you only get to two or three and you can't stand it, there's something probably wrong with it uh, when it comes to the, the 16D, Super 16D, and even the C-CAN motors. So, while that's running, we're going to show you some motor brushes and what to look for. So, we're going to zoom this in again. And again, we'll do a quick run through. Uh, here we have an unradiused brush. Okay, out of the packaged, unradiused. It's got your flat tips, not very, very smooth, kind of a rough finish. And then a radiused brush. is going to look like this. Rough, but it's not going to have the flats. It's going to have sharp tips. And I guess I should have turned that other one this way, but you yep, there's a hair on there. You see that. Anyway, the hair's still there. But you're going to have a nice radius. So, you're going to run your motor in, and after an hour, you need to pull it off power supply, and you need to take a brush out on one side, and pay attention to the way you pulled it out, because you want to put it back in the same way you pulled it out. And you're going to take that brush, and you're going to look at the face of that brush, and what you want to see is a nice, shiny surface, top to bottom, tip to tip. And this is a pretty good, this, this, this actually came out of a motor that's been running a race, so it's fully seated and that's what you're looking for. Now, here's what happens when a brush is not fully seated in after you've run the motor for a while. Uh, you can see how it's shiny. On the one half, and it's it's rough and looks like it's radiused on the other side. So that's a motor brush, and normally they don't look like this, but somehow I found this in a, in my brush bin of used brushes. But this was perfect to show you the difference between seated, and as I'm looking at this, I'm going to say shiny is on the right, and the rough, unshiny side's on the left. That's unseated. Okay, so to be fully seated, you want to look like this, nice and shiny and smooth all the way across the face of the brush, top to bottom, tip to tip. And then, you know, in about a half hour here, I'm going to, well, I'm not know about a half hour, but here in a little bit, I'll pull the, the motor that's running and I'm going to pull a brush out and we'll see how some of it's seated and some of it's not. Now, after you've run your motor brushes or you run your motors on the track, and even if you do this on, on the bench, if you pull a motor apart and your brush looks like this, let me find one. This brush, as you can see, is not aligned to the commutator because it has a, a longer tip on the top than it does on the bottom. That is not lined up correctly. Another example will be this one. Again, these have come out of motors that have been raced. They weren't aligned correctly, or maybe in maybe in the maybe in the race, uh, motor uh, the car was in an accident, and maybe it tweaked the brush hood, and uh, it threw the alignment off. And then we've got another one here. This one's really off. And yeah, the motor runs, but it's not running the way it should. You want those to be as as close. To radius in the center as you can possibly get, like this brush. 
And this came out of an actual race motor after a race. Or maybe it had more races on it. But, I mean, that's almost perfect alignment. And that's what you want. Now, I have a motor here, a ProSlot FK motor, that I actually raced uh, last weekend. And what I want to do is I want to pull a brush out and I want to see because sometimes what you see after you run them in and what they actually do in a race is two different things but this brush out of the motor I raced last weekend and again this was a sealed ProSol FK motor good old eyeball alignment with a hood tool it's pretty much perfect on the back motor brush as far as the radius goes so I'm going to put that back in and take the front side off spring and get the brush out of there And again, almost perfect radius. I'm going to call that perfect radius. And that's all using the eyeball and a hood tool. So, I periodically will spot check motors after a race or two to, to, check, to check that alignment. Um, sometimes if you have a motor you get in a crash and the motor is slow after the crash I mean it could be several things it could be a, a bound up oil light bushing um, it could be uh, you hit hard enough to maybe move the magnets around a little bit in the motor or it could just be you've knocked one of the hoods out of alignment so and another good thing to do um, after every race or every couple races is come in and make sure just retighten these end bell screws because when they cycle and get hot normal running things will kind of shift and move so every now after every, every race or two you just want to go in there and just just make sure they're, they're still tight okay so I believe this is dry now Sure, this is this is good enough to work on.